Hey, it's Corey from ID Parts. And uh, in this video, I'll talk about Mercedes Injector Black Death. Um, this will affect really any Mercedes that's a common rail. It's really common on the Sprinters with the inline five cylinder diesels. It's also common on this uh, OM648 engine in my E320 CDI. I'll show you what it is. I'll show you how to fix it. Let's go. Injector Black Death is caused by a leaking injector seal. And what happens is the seal that's between the injector and basically the surface of the head is supposed to keep cylinder pressure from leaking out. When that seal fails, you get basically, every time there's a compression stroke, you're gonna get leakage of pressure past that seal and it's gonna come out around the injector. Now, what the result of that is this buildup of this black soot kind of everywhere. This isn't too bad. Um, I've seen engines where the black, you know, buildup is out here. And this is basically a mixture of uh, carbon from the exhaust gases, as well as unburnt fuel. So a very common uh, symptom of black death is that you'll smell diesel fuel around the engine or you know, around the vehicle anytime that you walk by it. And you'll check all the lines, there won't be any leaks, but if you take off the cover, you'll see that you've got this kind of black mess, and that is basically the unburnt fuel and all that soot. You can also tell because if you look at the underside, the sound paneling, you'll see this burnt area. And again, this is all hot exhaust gases and unburnt fuel coming out and kind of basically just toasting this uh, you know vibration and, and noise cover. So what we have to do is take this injector out, number one. Uh, we're gonna take the injector out. It's gonna involve, it's pretty simple, removing the fuel line and then taking this connector off, removing the return line, taking off. They're all held in by one bolt. And I think this is why, you know, the problem exists, it's a bolt. And then it's a, a basically a rocker arm with these two tangs that hold the injector down. It's just not very good at holding the injector down, making the proper torque. So sometimes the seals fail. So we're gonna take the bolt out. We're gonna take this line off. We're gonna disconnect the return line and the electrical connector. And then we're gonna extract the injector. After that, we're gonna clean the bore, clean the surface, uh, install a new seal, a new bolt. You always need to use a new bolt. It's a stretch to yield bolt. So you need that bolt to be new. Otherwise you'll have the same problem over and over again. And uh, we'll reassemble it with all new hardware and hopefully it will solve the problem. In rare cases, the injector will be so beat, especially if this has gone on for so long that the actually the, the sealing cap at the end of the injector will have cracks in it. And that means the injector, the body itself has failed and that's gonna require a new or a rebuilt injector be put in. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take off the injector line. It's a 14 millimeter on this car and I've got a flare and wrench here. What I like about it, it, it grabs basically all but one side of the nut. A little fuel will dribble out, but that's normal. You wanna store this in a way that you don't get any debris inside this line. See the black death has kind of reached the connector here too. Rather than pull the line off, we'll take the fitting out actually on this. There's an O-ring that's in between the injector and the line here. And you're gonna to wanna to replace that whenever you take the uh, this fitting out. Okay, this is a T40. Um, some sockets won't be able to make the won't be able to fit, it's pretty tight clearance. So you may need to get a different socket to, to uh, actually reach the bolt. Whatever you do, you need to be really careful because this valve cover is cast aluminum. So if you take a tool like this and you pry, you're most likely gonna break the casting, and that's not gonna be a good end of your day. So whatever you do, you need to be really quite careful to not make the problem worse. Number one goal in any repair is to not make the problem. Now what you'll find is this black gunk really turns into a very, very adhesive mess. Oh, look at that. Been like that for a little bit. Um, so PB Blaster is your friend, any type of penetrating fluid just to try to break through this gunk and release the hold that this, you know, hold down clamp is going to have on the injector. Again, be really careful, cast aluminum. <laughs> Don't pry against this, it will break. 
this job will get more expensive. If you must pry, you can use a flathead screwdriver and get it between the body and the injector and the hold down clamp. The injector is pretty much hardened steel, so I wouldn't use a hammer, I use a hockey puck and my hand. Very, very gentle. And that should be able to push the hold down clamp free. Pick tools are your friend. You can see what we're fighting against, this buildup. It's hard. It's gonna take some time to get through. Now the last battle you're gonna to have to fight, and it's gonna be a hard one, a bad one, you're not gonna like it, is getting the injector out. If you've got buildup the way this one does, it's gonna be pretty hard to get the injector down there. So spend some time with your pick tool and go ahead and clean out as much of this crap as you can. So in order to get these injectors out, you'll definitely need an injector claw puller. This is one that Mercedes especially offers. It's not cheap, it's like a hundred bucks or so. Um, but there's really no way that you get these injectors out without this tool. There's, you know, some injectors you can grab the fuel line on the top. Can't do that here because the return line and the, you know, the uh, injector lines on the side. So here's a Mercedes tool. What you'll find is there's not enough clearance, especially on number one injectors. So what I've done to this one is I've modified it slightly. I've shaved off the front lip on both the tangs and you can see a little bit, I've taken off a little bit of the backside. What you'll see is as you insert it, you're gonna, without these modifications, you'll hit this flat spot on the valve cover. And if you push it, it's gonna break the valve cover. Again, this is a theme, don't break the valve cover. So with those modifications, this will drop kind of right in and I'll be able to work it in. Again, there's so much buildup, it's not gonna really go in too nicely. Um, and if it's not really getting there, you wanna take this out and kind of keep working at taking away some of that buildup. You really wanna get this fully seated. You don't wanna be pulling up sideways on an injector. So I'm gonna keep working at this and I'll probably take the claw out again and keep cleaning to try to get a better purchase. You can see all the junk that's coming off on the claw. So after a few rounds of cleaning, I've been able to get the injector claw fully seated. It's pretty much parallel up and down with the injector. Now I'm gonna take a slide hammer, slide it into this top threaded hole. You will need a slide hammer for this. Mercedes sells one. It's again, a lot of money. You can just buy an aftermarket one that'll thread into this hole. So you can use a slide hammer to extract this injector. Slide hammer here is got a fairly short throw, so it's not the most efficient, but I've been working at it for a little while. And if you look close, you can see that the injector that I'm working on is a little bit higher than the ones that are still installed. So this is gonna take a while. Remember, you are working against all the crap that's built up inside that injector bore that's now turned into a hardened, basically, glue, like an epoxy. So this is gonna take a while. Again, don't be afraid to use some penetrating fluid to try to loosen it up. It's not gonna get all the way through this stuff, but you know, you need all the help you can get here. So I'm gonna get back to it and hopefully I can get it out without too much more effort. Now, as you can see, this one's really giving me a hard time. So I want to show you a trick I use. That is a heat gun. I found that removing the injectors was a lot easier on a hot engine. Uh, part of that's because of expansion of the metal. Part of that's because the, uh, the epoxy kind of black death softens up when it's hot. So heating up the injector in the area around it will make this job a lot easier. And you want to use a heat gun, not like an acetylene torch, because a torch may melt, you know, some of the fuel lines and the plastics around here. However, a heat gun, if used properly, won't do that. Uh, you want to try to get the, t the, the injector to about, you know, 180, 200 degrees. That's, you know, about operating temperature for this engine. So nothing, this whole engine bay is designed to handle temperatures that are probably going to be in the 220s, 230s. So you don't have to worry about melting anything. And you'll get the injector and the area around it heated up. And then the injector will pop out much easier. So before you really start hurting yourself trying to get this thing out or breaking, you know, more of the engine, try using a heat gun because it may save you a lot of stress. All right, that injector bore is pretty dirty. You can see the seal down there still. So I gotta get the seal out. I'll use my pick tool to get the seal out and then I'll do some cleaning here and we'll see how it turns out. What I do is I use a uh, brass brush, 
And you can get kits uh, for this all over the place. They're just injector bore cleaning kits. And you wanna get the brass ones. And the reason is that brass is softer than aluminum. So brass will not damage the aluminum. If you get an aluminum brush, it's the same, you know, which is the same hardness as the aluminum, you'll end up scratching the bore. And you probably won't do much damage, but you really don't wanna uh, do, you know, put any wear on the inside of that bore. So go, f go with the brass brush if you can. You're gonna drop that in there and then kind of go th all the way down and back up. It's gonna take a few times of this. This is a great job for a high quality, like a brake clean or a brake and parts cleaner. This stuff is from Worth, a uh, really high quality product. What's nice about brake clean is that it evaporates. It's not water-based, so it's not gonna rust anything on the inside. And if some gets into the cylinder, you won't have a problem with hydrolock later on. It will evaporate. So um, this is the way to go. I've, but I'll still spray some on the, here I've got these giant Q-tips and spray some on the outside and then work my way around the board to try to clean it up as much as possible. I'm gonna keep going on this to try to make this really, really clean. After done cleaning everything out, the uh, next thing that I like to do is I use one of these shop vac extension adapters. You know, put your full size shop vac on one end and at the end here, you have a very small straw and that can go all the way down the bore and I can collect all of the remaining pieces that the brush, the, the brush knocked free, but didn't take out. So you wanna get anything out of there because you want the bottom of the bore to be super, super clean and you don't want any of that debris to be sitting in the cylinder. So a little bit of negative pressure here goes a long way to getting a lot of that stuff out. Once you have the injector bores cleaned out and the injector pull down bolt hole and threads clean, it's time to reassemble. The torque for the injector hold down bolt is a three stage torque. Go to seven Newton meters, then do a 90 degree turn and then a final 90 degree turn. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, email us sales at idparts.com or leave a comment below and we'll do our best to get back to you. Thanks for watching.